Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. It's a Monday, and a special Monday. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to uh, all of you out there. Valentine's Day is a holiday we celebrate here in the states and a lot of parts of the world. It's a. Uh, it was. It started off as a religious holiday after Saint Valentine, and uh, it kind of morphed like Christmas has into a kind of a different holiday. Now we we all think of of Valentine's Day as a holiday to appreciate our significant other or. Uh, somebody in, the, uh, in our lives that we love and you know and it is the uh, holiday of love so to speak you know a lot of candy and flowers are given away and cards things like that and um, that brings me to a <laughs> a little bit of a rant <laughs> you know and I'll tell you why ever since I was a kid cards you know greeting cards I have a, a collection of some really nice cards from when I was younger because there were always my grandmother had a, a, a drawer full of, of cards that she would keep and years ago they had some beautiful cards especially like in the Victorian era oh my god these cards were just like stained glass windows they were just beautiful and I don't know what happened all of a sudden I don't know if it was in the 70s the, I don't know what happened mediocrity stuck his ugly head out and we started getting these ugly cards and these and and the prices didn't go down you know and cards are, are when you look at the prices of some of these cards you say how do they get four or five dollars for this piece of paper that has a horrible image on it i don't understand you know back in the day uh, cards were a beautiful artwork and they hired these artists to paint and draw and have these whimsical characters and nice colors on perfect cardstock. <laughs> Today, what junk! And they got the nerve to try and charge that kind of, I don't know. So I've always been a big fan of uh, homemade cards. you ever receive a homemade card? I know if you're a grandparent or something you probably did, but uh, you know as you get older, when you see the time that somebody put into like making a card compared to and I'm not talking about printing one out on the computer. That's a whole different thing. I'm talking about, you know, if a kid sits down and makes a card. And I remember when I was in, in a scout leader, I, before the Valentine's Day, I would bring down a whole bunch of supplies and have the kids make their own cards for their mothers, you know. That was a big thing. And uh, I wanted them to appreciate their moms and... Uh, I would bring down all kinds of uh, craft paper and, and uh, those paper doilies and all, and I would give them all kinds of ideas and I would bring down my Victorian cards to show them and they were blown away. They were like, wow, what nice cards. Obviously, you can't emulate something like that because you don't have that artistic ability as a kid. But it was nice to see where we came from and not where we're going. Some of the cards today are just horrible. <laughs> and... Uh, so with that, let me show you something that Amazon still sells that's uh, pretty now, interesting. Uh, a few years back, Amazon was just selling this on their site. And what it is, it's a reprint of some old, like, 1940s Valentine's Day card. And uh, it was beautiful, you know. And, and let me show you what's so interesting here. This, this cost $4.99. Manufactured in China, of course, right? We can't do our own printing here. That's another thing we have to farm out. Anyway, $4.99. So for the price of one card, look at all these beautiful cards. And I know some of these are kind of, you know, kind of a young theme or whatever. But I like these. These were in the 1940s. And they, they had such beautiful colors. And they have flocking. Flocking is almost like it feels like a kind of a velvet. A lot of these cards had, and a lot, some of these cards were animated. And what an animated card means that when you 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 pop these cards out of here, it's made on a card stock, and this is a a real card stock, not the paper card stock. But what an animated card is is you you put something here and you you can move it, and it'll have movements on here. But you can see some other type cards they had, and such uh, you know. And again, it's got the flocking on a lot of these cards. It's real nice. It even came with envelopes in the middle that you could fold up and, and, and make them. But, uh, you know, you got quite a few cards here for that $4.99. It was just a, a beautiful... Here's one. You could see it's a tri-fold. But I just... I, I like the way they... You know, the colors and the artwork and the, the whimsical. It was It was nice, you know. And uh, I just don't know what, what happened. What happened to our artists? This is the problem when you let people do whatever they think they want to do. You know, if you, 
You either have an, uh, an art ability to draw or you don't. You can't fake. <laughs> that now it's all copy and paste. That's what I think all the guys that work for the Hallmark do. They copy and paste. Nobody can draw anymore. Anyway, always enjoy. So this. a little bit of a Valentine's Day rant, but that's just for every card. You know, Christmas time, Easter, whatever it was. Easter, they had some beautiful cards, Victorian Easter cards and stuff. Oh man. I wish we could get back to that, you know, to, to having quality and appreciating people with abilities instead of trying to say everybody can do it and everybody deserves a trophy because everybody doesn't. <laughs> with that, I want to give you a sneak peek of what I got my girlfriend for uh, for Valentine's Day. Of course, I had to get, you know, the, the traditional flowers and candy with her, but you know, I always buy a little gift or something. And I like to surround myself with things that please me you know in my whole my upstairs my my whole house is filled with all kinds of things I grew up with things that that just give me pleasure to look at when I walk by I said I had that as a kid and I remember so I it's uh let me show you and what I got. here it is now uh this whole thing started with this gift is when uh when I was doing the phones remember I was talking about that 19 50s beautiful phone the 500 bell phone and i asked her i said what kind of phone did you have growing up she says you know what i had i had a garfield so phone. i went on ebay and i said i'm gonna get her a garfield phone because she had one in the 80s which is her favorite time uh, to be alive was her you know 1980s so i said i'll get her a garfield phone and it'll bring you know make her remember back in the day but then i look and <laughs> these things have become crazy collectible and uh, they're they're quite expensive, and the reason is a couple reasons. One is because they were they're pretty interesting. Look, when you lift up the, the headset, look at the eyes. The eyes open up. You see, when you open and close, the eyes open up. So I thought that's pretty cool. Here, let me show you again. The eyes open up when you lift the headset. It's got the uh, touch tone. So this is a nice phone in working condition. Everything. Uh, the problem is that these phones are interesting story back in 1980 uh, There was a ship that was going over to uh, Overseas to Europe and one of the shipping containers fell off and in this shipping container were hundreds of these Garfield phones and since then for the last 35 years these phones have been washing up on a northern France shores uh, so much so that they became like a pollution problem and they had people going out there and collecting them So that, that for some reason is kind of a world following for these and they become quite like I said collectible, but pretty interesting Garfield phone, so I hope she likes it and uh, You know, I hope she don't see this video before she, I give it to her So, you know, it's always nice to have things that you grew up with around the house because it, it, I'm telling you you feel good when you walk by like like this thing over here, you see this here? It's just a little, this little Snoopy soap dish, or whatever that is now. Now, when I was a kid, I must have had one of these because years later, I saw this at a flea market and I said, I gotta have that thing. I don't know why, but every time I see this thing, it was a soap dish. I guess they used to put soap in it, you see here? and, and uh, But when I, I have him over here and the, he's the first guy I see when I come down the basement to go into the shop every day. And I always like, it's nice to see him. It's like an old friend, you know, so you have little things like that from your youth that bring back good memories. I have good memories, maybe taking bubble baths as a kid, you know, I haven't taken a bubble bath in a long time. I used to like those things. <laughs> okay, one of the projects I had to start off today, I had to replace the switch on my uh, 1x30 belt sander. It was smoking. The other day I was doing a wrench and that, that wrench that and it was smoking and I, I don't know what happened. Some of the footage got compromised or whatever so I, I had to piece together but I replaced the switch and I wanted to do a tutorial on but let's just check it out and see uh, what little bit I saved. Okay so that brings us today's first project which is uh, you know I was using this the other day to do the wrench remember this wrench a lot of people like this wrench it was fun it was a fun little project from Hook and uh, now what happened is I was using this belt sander, which I haven't used in a while. I kind of like the flap grinder now, but as I was using this, this switch I never liked. It has a plastic cover on here. It, you know, I just never liked it. I never had a positive click. I'm big into switches. I love switches. And this thing started smoking. So much so that I was like, oh, I got, how, how am I going to finish the project? I don't want to go to my other. I don't have the same number of belts for the other side. So 
what I did was I made sure it was on and I kept plugging and unplugging it every time I went to turn it on just to get the project done. But we need to put a new switch in. Now, uh, to put a new switch in, you could easily just go online and, and the grizzly parts or any of these parts are fairly inexpensive, you know. So you go to the website and you can order one up, snaps right in. The problem is they don't make that switch anymore. And rightly so. The thing was, I never liked it. And I had that same problem with this. Press here. This switch here, this is like the second one I think I replaced. And uh, you see here? This switch will go, and the worst part is it usually fails with it on. So you go to shut it off, it won't shut off, which can be dangerous, you know, especially when you need a switch. So next time this goes, that's the last time that crap switch is going on. So when the switch went, I said, you know what, I'm going to replace, I want to put a different switch on there, like a toggle switch, something I like. And the reason I told you I like switches so much, let me explain a little bit about the humble but fantastic invention known as the switch. Now my fascination with switches came at a very early age when I realized that there are so many, there are thousands of different configurations and even a different configurations within the same switch like these toggle switches. Now in its most simplest form, a toggle switch is either an on or off, it just breaks the circuit. But you can have other toggle switches that when you switch it one way, it turns on some other circuits. When you switch it the other way, it turns on other circuits, depending on how many poles you have. And they that's how switches are designated. They're usually uh, poles and throws, like this here is called a single pole, single throw, which is SPST. And uh, if you have a double pole, double throw, it, it's DP, DT, and that's how you determine what kind of switch you need. Uh, years ago, the old-fashioned, I love these old knife switches. These, This here had a, a fuse. You could see you would screw in a fuse up here, and this was a knife switch. Now, this is actually two single pole, single throw switches that you could couple together, or you can leave them separate to break the circuit. Now, this these... There's nothing wrong with these. You don't see them anymore in homes, I guess, because they're open. They want to keep it closed. And UL, Underwriters Laboratories, they don't consider that safe or OSHA, whatever, that you could touch something. But these switches are still used in industrial applications today, knife switches. And that's all the switch does. It makes contact or breaks contact. And so when we're going to deal with, the, with this belt sander here, uh, we just want to put in a new switch, uh, and I want to put in, it's probably just a, a breaking of the circuit. And let's take I've a look I've never removed the switch before, but this seems like this is a dust cover on here. You see how it moves a little bit? So we got to pry that up over here, and you just take an X-Acto, uh, some kind of, something that can get under the corner here, and you try and pry this up, okay? And again, you know... Uh, Try and work your way around it so you're not doing really any damage. But here you can see we pried up that cover here. And that reveals a standard on-off. And you can see, you see it's broken. It don't even have the snap anymore. And that's a standard, what they call rocker switch. Okay. Now the circle indicates that the uh, it's open. And the line indicates that it's closed. Meaning that it'll turn the machine on. Now these rocker switches are usually pressed in from the top so again, the same thing, you want to pry it up from the corner. Sometimes you could lift it up with the blade to get a screwdriver under there and just work your way around it. And there we go, we're popping this up here. Sometimes you just got to finesse a little bit. There we go. And there is our switches, okay? Now you can see here, okay, what do we have here now? Now, this isn't a, uh, there are four leads on here, okay? So that would be a... Uh, Single throw, double pole. Okay, now uh, this is the switch that came out of the Grizzly belt sander. And my uh, belt sander is only rated at 2 amps, the motor. However, whenever you're replacing a component anytime, you're not an engineer. So the best thing to do is look at the component here. And you can see here it's rated for 10 amps, the switch. So it's always a good idea to put in the same or greater um, capacity switch. So we replaced this with a uh, 10 amp uh, single throw double pole switch and this has the spade connectors. Now you can find the, uh, the, the toggle switches with the spade connectors and you could just put it in 
just by sandwiching in in between two pieces of plexiglass to take up that okay room. we remounted the switch here and now you see i always keep my scraps of plexiglass you might say a small piece like this throw it i never do you just throw it over there with the rest of the plexiglass because this is a perfect size if you you could cut this in half and make two switch plates you know for when you have a hole that's too big for the switch that works good now we plugged it in and now Just a nice switch. I always love a good toggle switch. Now, if you've ever been curious to see how a rocker switch works inside, it's very simple and it's uh, kind of ingenious. Now, here is the top plate, okay? And it has uh, these two pylons. And these pylons, when they rock, they go forward and backwards, forward and backwards, okay? And then we have curved pieces of contact material here, brass, copper, whatever they'll be. And when they rock, It'll either push on this side or this side. You can see by rocking there and it'll make the contact. And when I pull these two uh, pieces of contact material out, you can see there it rests on that like a seesaw. It'll rest on that middle section. And when you push the switch one way, it'll make this contact between here and here. When you push it the other way, it makes a contact between there and there. So it's like a seesaw. And this is all you have making the contacts are a small piece. That's a 10 amp rating, a small piece of, uh, of contact material. Like I said, it's, you know, uh, either brass or copper and and here's an interesting because if you look at this side This is you could see where we were having a problem. You could see whenever you see that blackening That here is where the problem was it wasn't seating right or it was loose and that's what was making that spark the contact so to be honest, I was kind of surprised there was no spring in that switch which usually gives you that positive contact action Without a spring, you know, you could, you're uh, liable to have arcing problems. It looks like that's what we had over there with that switch. Very interesting to me. Uh, anyway, in closing, I hope you have a great Valentine's Day. Time really flew today. I hope you have an enjoyable holiday. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>